animatedanatomy.com. The first muscle that I will talk about in this group is the supinator muscle. The supinator muscle has the origin on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, here. It also has the origin on the superior crest of ulna. Here is the ulna. You can see it, it has the superior crest of the ulna. Then it also has the origin on the radial collateral ligament. This is the ligament here, which cannot be seen clearly. And it also has the origin on the angular ligament. That's the ligament that go, wraps around, it goes around here. And the collateral ligament just goes here. Now, of course, this is not clearly illustrated here. It's not modeled very precisely, and I apologize for that. However, just remember two ligaments here. Now, uh, the insertion of this muscle is the lateral proximal radial shaft. That's right here, okay? Uh, the reason why it's on the lateral proximal radial shaft is because it does the supination of the forearm. That means when this muscle contracts, the arm is going to rotate outwards. Okay, uh, we had uh, pronators on the other side that makes the radius rotate around the ulna inwards. However, this muscle will force it to rotate outwards. Now, the next two muscles in anatomical snuff box that I mentioned is the extensor pollicis longus. It has the origin on the ulna and the insertion on the distal phalanx of the thumb. So here, on the distal phalanx of the thumb. Of course, the action of this muscle is the extension of the thumb at the metacarpophalangeal joints. Then I mentioned another one. It is the extensor pollicis brevis. The extensor pollicis brevis does not come from ulna, but it has the origin on radius here. The insertion of this muscle is not the distal phalanx, but the proximal phalanx of the thumb. Now the function of this muscle is the extension of the thumb at the, also at the metacarpal phalangeal joint here. However, the longus, since it inserts at the distal phalanx, it also makes the extension here at the um, interphalangeal joint. So please remember that. That's the difference between these two muscles. Now the antagonists of these muscles are the flexor pollicis longus and flexor pollicis brevis on the other side. So here we have the flexors and here we have the extensors. Now I will remove these flexors because we're not studying them now. And let's get back to our deep group of the posterior compartment. The last muscle in this group that I will talk about is the extensor indices. Here is the extensor indices. I will remove this muscle so we can see it clearly. And the extensor indices has the origin on the ulna. So it starts from ulna. It inserts on the index finger, the extensor hood. It is the connective tissue that I mentioned in my previous lessons. Now the action of this muscle is quite clear. It serves to extend the index finger and the wrist. Now when I go back, we had four muscles in this group. I will turn on this one over here too. Three of these made the snuff box, anatomical snuff box, but however they all have one thing in common and that is that they are innervated by the posterior interosseous nerve C7 to C8. So now I will talk about the muscles of the hand. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description, or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.